Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. CARICOM called on to lobby U.S. to help in fight against gun trafficking. St. Catherine Councillor calls on Al Gajay President to withdraw comment. And later in sports, no CPL for Jamaica for fourth straight year. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has called on CARICOM leaders to lobby the United States to help in stopping the flow of guns to the region. He was speaking at a regional symposium titled Violence as a Public Health Issue, the Crime Challenge, in Trinidad this morning. He says the consolidated effort is needed as it was a collaborative effort from CARICOM that helped the U.S. Con that helped the US government in its drug fight. It is the greatest unfairness that we have diverted resources from other areas in which we could have spent it to fund and support a war on drugs. By the way, the two things are related, but there seems to be no real interest in stopping the other part of the trade, which are the guns. The guns fuel crime. They are an accelerant. They are needed to protect drugs that are transshipped through our borders. They are then turned to deal with other forms of criminal activities. We In the meantime, he's calling for greater focus on the ports of entry to CARICOM countries. We must also increase in a consummate way our own spending on securing our ports and our airports and points of entry and increase our ability to detect the entry of illegal weapons. And we must also change our laws so that they align with the new and sophisticated crimes that are being committed and the flow of weapons into our country. Despite the recent spate of violence across the island, the St. Anne police say they have things under control. More in the support from Kerry Ann Simpson. According to Deputy Superintendent in charge of crime in St. Anne, Lately, major crimes are decreasing. However, there have been 22 murders in the parish since the start of the year, an increase of eight when compared to 14 during the same period last year. DSP Bailey says despite that increase, significant progress has been made in the arrest rate. He provided an update during the recent Senan Municipal Corporation. Breaking is down by um, 23%. Robbery, 19%. Overall, major crimes are done by 31%. DSP Bailey says as the police ramp up their efforts to curb crime in the parish, they have noticed new emerging hotspots. The hotspot area, the area that we have, well, we would have, have the most potential for violence. Those are not the areas at this time giving us the issues. They are well policed. Some of these murders, they are coming from, a lot of them are from land disputes. And these land disputes is not necessarily over paperwork, but is over possession. He says there are plans to analyze and implement the necessary interventions. In the meantime, the police in St. Anne are assuring residents and business operators in the parish that it is safe to do business. We had a meeting relative to the situation in Portmore with the courier service being attacked and robbed. We had meeting with two meetings with the financial institution and other interest group and stakeholders. Those meetings went well and we want to assure the public that we are here ready to assist in the transportation of large sum of cash um, and to give advice as to how to move your cash from one place to another. He also had advice for construction site contractors. And we're also asking that Persons and construction sites, our major construction sites, pay their workers by bank deposit instead of cash. Kerry and Simpson for TVJ News. In the meantime, there was a war of words at the Municipal Corporation meeting when Councillor for the Beecher Town Division, Ian Bell, took DSP Bailey to task, accusing him of demonizing the community of Paritown in his constituency. Have you ever known 
Mr. Constable, I'd like to apologize to question me as to my intelligence. And I think that, I think that um, you need to, your, your, your behavior in this meeting is, 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 is an undeserved one. And you're attacking the, the office, the office, the office of the superintendent. I have been privileged to be the counselor of a party for 15 years, December that. And at no time at all has ever one activity been shot up by any gunman. And senior shoot officers reporting that gunman fire indiscriminately. You know what indiscriminate fire is? Explain that to me, sir. The chairman, Mayor Sidney Stewart, had to intervene, requesting that Councillor Bell reserve his grouse until an internal meeting is held. Meanwhile, the police in the neighboring parish of St. Mary are reporting a reduction in murders. Deputy Superintendent of Police in charge of operations, Joseph Foster, says so far 11 murders have been committed in the parish. That is four, four fewer than the comparative period in 2022. DSP Foster says special focus is being placed on a double murder in Highgate, where a 16-year-old and a correctional officer were murdered while watching a game of football. That is being investigated by a major investigation division, the double murder. Um, they investigate. Uh, yesterday there was a review. Um, taskings were given out and all of that. We are look at se there are several um, things that have been said in the community. We are looking into all of them and see how best we can um, solve this one. DSP Foster, however, noted that further that further that break-ins are on the rise. We have seen in Islington and Igit. We are seeing some increase in breakings there. And we, we observe a pattern. Uh, person, um, they, are, they are waiting and they notice like uh, the front door is open, gadgets are gone, um, phones, laptop, and all of that. Uh, we, 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 are seeing, we, we are seeing it. But what we have put that is in place to to deal with it and we ask that uh you know our community members uh please just implore to be vigilant and over in manchester one of the victims of sunday's fatal shooting in chad remains in critical condition in hospital according to information about nine o'clock yesterday morning residents heard explosions coming from a bar and alerted the police the bodies of two men were later discovered with bullet wounds. One has been identified as Stenneth Hutchinson, otherwise known as the Porty. Two injured persons were taken to hospital. Now residents are calling for the police in the parish to do more to control crime. And it's time for a break here on the Bidney News, but please stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. At least one councillor has picked a bone of contention with President of the Association of Local Government Authorities of Jamaica, Al J. Winston Mirage. Councillor for the Westchester Division, Rainier Benjamin, is calling for Mr. Mirage to withdraw a statement he claims the Al Gaje president made. Sandy Williams reports. The Association of Local Government Authorities of Jamaica, Al Gaje, has been negotiating a new compensation package for councillors. However, recently president of Al Gaje, Winston Mirage, has come under pressure to wrap up the wage talks with the government. While commenting on the matter recently, Mr. Mirage indicated indicated that councils were anxious to see the end result of the wage talks. There's a term that they use um, to, to when councils are agitated, eh? Right, because councils are, are watching and they have seen that we are, um, the minister is now at 95% completed with the civil servants. So they are getting agitated now because they are anxious to hear um, what their you know, package will look like. 
However, in a Gleaner article last Wednesday, Mr. Mirage was quoted saying, quote, Some councillors, especially the opposition councillors, are anxious to hear how much the increases in salaries are going to be, end quote. At least one opposition councillor in St. Catherine has taken issue with the pronouncement of the Algaji president. Rainier Benjamin is councillor for the Westchester Division. As the chairman of Algaji, he doesn't represent government or nor opposition councillors. He represents all councillors. So to make a comment like that, to say that especially the opposition councillors, I believe that he has erred and he should withdraw that statement. Speaking with our new center on Sunday, Mr. Mirage, who is also chairman of the Clarendon Municipal Corporation, explained that he was referring to councillors in that parish. Previous newscasts of um, council meetings um, would have seen that the opposition councillors were more um, forceful in voicing their concerns and the roles of, of, of the councillors presently and the amount of cost that they have to bear every day as a councillor. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. One workers union is taking the government to task following the recent issues with salary payments on the public sector reform exercise. The Union of Technical Administrative and Supervisory Personnel, UTASP, says the government was not acting in good faith as the policies introduced were not agreed on by the various unions prior to implementation. More in this report. There has been growing discontent among public sector employees over their adjusted salaries under the compensation review. General Secretary of the Union of Technical, Administrative and Supervisory Personnel, St. Patrice Ennis, says the challenges faced by the public sector workers during the compensation review exercise were the result of a lack of transparency on the government's part. Mr. Ennis explains that the policies introduced dealt specifically with the removal of certain allowances and other benefits without the knowledge of the unions. It cannot be that um, the government is implementing policies changing people's terms and conditions of employment when the unions and the government had no discussion on that matter. And government purporting that those are as a result, those changes are as a result of an understanding between the government and the trade unions. When we mention things like, for example, the absorption of duty allowance, the government had no discussion with the trade unions on, on such matters. Um, the non-payment of increments from 22 to 2025. They, there was no discussion with the government on that. The cessation of passenger mileage, the cessation of payment of mileage arising from sessions and honorarium. Those things were never discussed with the government and the government has ceased to, to make payment on some of, of those allowances. Mr. Ennis maintains that the policy changes required discussions between the Office of the Services Commission and the Governor-General. Our public service regulations stipulate the conditions under which implement can be withheld, deferred, sus and, and suspended. And that can only be done by the Governor-General acting on the recommendation of the Services Commission. It gives the conditions under which increment can be prejudiced, lack of efficiency, unsatisfactory service or conduct, failure to pass a requisite examination conditional to the grant of, a, of, of, of the officer's increment. None of those conditions were met. I don't even know if the trade unions and the government have the, have the imprimatur to change such relations because I believe you must go back to the regulations if you are to effect any changes to the guard in increment. He was speaking Sunday on Radio Jamaica's That's a Wrap program. A meeting was held between the Ministry of Finance and several unions last week to address some grouses raised by public sector workers since the implementation of new wage agreements. Another meeting is to be held later this month. Hal Shane Burke reporting for TVJ News. And it's now time for the Business Minute. St. Anne-based attraction Mystic Mountain Limited, MML, could this week get approval for a purchaser after a meeting in the Supreme Court. Wilfred Bagalou, PricewaterhouseCoopers executive, who has been appointed as receiver of Mystic Mountain, had indicated that both local and regional bars had been entertained in the quest to sell the operation. Mystic Mountain's default on bond payments followed the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in March 2020, under which circumstances 
the tourism industry and the company's revenues were affected. It's why the company declared bankruptcy and the courts appointed officials to restore creditors under local insolvency laws. Sky High Holdings Limited, the secured creditors of MML, owns 100% of MML's senior secured fixed rate bonds in the principal amount of 1 billion 100 million Jamaican dollars. MML failed to make principal and interest payments on those bonds, resulting in the full amount becoming due on January 26, 2021. A hearing to approve the sale is being sought in the Supreme Court before the end of April 2023. Further afield, Montana is one step closer to becoming the first U.S. state to ban TikTok on all personal devices. Friday, state lawmakers passed the ban on the short-form video platform, sending the bill to Governor Greg Gianforte's desk. The legislation would prohibit TikTok from operating within state lines and even ban app stores from offering the popular app for downloads. It would not penalize individuals for using TikTok, but app stores who violate the law would face potential penalties of $10,000 per violation per day. If the governor signs the bill, the ban would take effect in January. TikTok has already hinted at a potential legal challenge if the bill does become law. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Hal Shane Burke. And the time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, the main opposition political party in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is expressing alarm over the spate of violent crimes in recent times, most of which are gun-related. The New Democratic Party NDP in a statement says the crime situation has the nation alarmed following two recent murders. It's accusing the Minister of National Security of failing in his promise to be tough on crime and the causes of crime. President of the NDP and leader of the opposition, Dr. Goodwin Friday, said he is ready to work in the nation's best interest. On the international scene, the death toll from clashes between an armed paramilitary group and Sudan's military has risen to nearly 100. There were more reports of explosions and gunfire on Monday in Sudan's capital Khartoum with fighting in the country now in a third day. The clashes on Monday were centered on the capital's Republican Palace, Army Command Building and International Airport. The clashes first erupted on Saturday. And 16 people are dead and 9 others injured after a fire at a residential building in Dubai. The blaze happened in the Al Ras area, one of the oldest parts of Dubai. According to reports, the fire broke out on the fourth floor of the five-story building. Dubai's civil defense said it was caused by a lack of compliance with building security and safety requirements. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Karian Simpson. Thanks, Gary. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Jordan Ford will have your midday sports report.